Quai Hollow Church, because of its faithfulness of the members uh, throughout its many, many years, stands as a beacon of light into our community, into our greater community, into the world. Um, as the servants of God, um, we profess our faith and we also, um, through the great, because of the great commissioning, we extend that faith by witnessing to others. And that's what makes Kwai Hao what it is. That's what Aloha is all about. It's, a, it's about being Aloha so you are able to bless others with that Aloha. Aloha is a very powerful way of life. It's a very Jesus-like um, adjective. If you use it as an adjective, you know, it's a compassionate, kind, generous, sharing um, kind of thing. And so I think, you know, tying our Christianity and our roots here at Kavai Hao with our Hawaiian culture and that Aloha, it's, it's kind of a whole package, you know, it's, it's all intertwined and it's so important that we instill those things in our kids. The story of Kauai Hao Church demonstrates God's amazing plan for His kingdom here on earth with the planting of seeds. Thousands of miles away from Hawaii, there was a young man by the name of Henry Opukahaia, a native Hawaiian who had in his youth boarded a fur trading ship with the hope of starting a new life. By October of 1816, Opukahaia was attending the Foreign Mission School in Cornwall, Connecticut, where Native students were trained to preach the gospel back in their native lands. Sadly, Opukahaia prematurely died from typhus in 1818, but his dream had motivated the creation of the Sandwich Islands missions to bring the gospel to the Hawaiian Islands. So it came to be that on October 23, 1819, the American Board of Commissioners for Foreign Missions in Massachusetts sent a group of young missionaries who were inspired by Opukahaia's memoirs. Barely in their 20s, but equipped with skills in writing, farming, medicine, and music, they set sail to Hawaii. They also brought with them the most up-to-date technologies of the time, such as the Ramage printing press, which was brought on the ship, along with Elisha Loomis, who was an 18-year-old trained printer. There, the missionary company, led by Hiram Bingham, established Kauai Ha'o Church. Kauai Ha'o, affectionately known as the Stone Church, was at one point the tallest building in the city of Honolulu, and to this day stands as a beacon of light for the community, as well as a gathering place for all the people of Hawaii. It continues to bear fruit for the seeds which were planted over 200 years ago. In October of 2019, a delegation from Honolulu traveled to Park Street Church in Boston, where the original company of missionaries had been blessed before setting sail to Hawaii. 2020 was the bicentennial celebration year commemorating the first company of missionaries to arrive in Hawaii. Unfortunately, plans for this year-long celebration which was to include concerts, speaker series, a tea on the lawn, and ending with a gala luau celebration, all came to a halt due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Prior to COVID, we had many I had plans for a celebration that included a luau and a tea and many other activities that of course, when uh, COVID impacted our islands and um, for the safety of all of our membership, we decided that you know, we needed to close our doors uh, for social distance reasons to keep our kupuna and our membership safe. Um, so we have continued to work on celebrating, however, so we've been doing monthly presentations through our speaker series presentation. Uh, and then we have also um, been working on completing a pictorial history timeline that we're intending to still install um, on the walls of our church. The church ceased in-person worship services. And like many other churches around the islands, Kauai Ha'o was challenged with continuing to bring its Sunday services to its members and community at large. Kahuken Makuakane and his staff used modern methods of communication to stream spiritual services to their congregation. And technology comes around, we don't understand the technology. And so we kind of 
leave it behind and we fall further behind and further behind and further behind because we don't understand it so we don't want to I leave it to the young kids but guess what if we don't continue on the journey to help them and the misinformation that's coming at them then we are the ones who have failed them and so music dance arts you know, everything that has to do with the mo'olelo, the story of God in whatever kind of form is what we here at Kauai Hao are looking to do for the next generation. For them, to tell, for them to tell their story in the most comfortable way that they can. Whatever it takes for them to convey their thoughts about God will help raise not just their understanding but their self-esteem and their their closeness with God as they start to grow and as they grow their discipleship which means their followership grows and as their followership grows um, and and their self-worth remember the, the fruits of the spirit are gentleness kindness you know forbearance all of these things become a part of their uh, of their now a part of of their knowing their inside their character development then they feel comfortable about sharing that with their friends that's the discipleship piece we develop the next generation of disciples by allowing them to access the many many types of technologies of how the word is delivered so that as they develop their character, they will be the next generation of disciples. In the past 200 years, Kauai Ha'o Church has provided a spiritual foundation to teach future generations to channel their energies to do God's work in this world, to teach them that the purpose of their existence on earth is to love one another. That is the true spirit of Aloha. Today, Kauai Ha'o Church is pastored by Kahu Kenneth Makuakani. I have been so honored to be called to serve in Kauai Ha'o. You know, we closed our church down on March 13. On March 15, you know, Naholo and I immediately created the online service. We did the streaming, we did the Facebook, we did all of these social medias because of the experience that was gained from the other industry that I was in. All of the beauty that God has had prepared in my life and in the life of this church created this, this cross street where, we, where both of us met during a time when I feel I was necessary for this church. And this was the pandemic time. If all you have is a phone, we can send you a PDF or we can send you a link and just say, oh, just poke your finger on top this, on, on the picture and it's gonna open up to this, to this thing. And they go, and that's how we've been teaching our old folks. Something really simple. Now, that one piece of equipment can do all of these things and that delivery of information allows the congregation or the community to receive important information and all of a sudden, out of the clear blue sky, I get an email from somebody in the Netherlands. My name is Eliza, and I'm from Amsterdam. And then I was very interested in Hawaiian history. Then I found online this um, Kauai Hao Church. So I, you know, it just kind of felt right to go there. So and I went there, and I just felt this like sense of like warm and opening um, and openness and stuff. And that's like how I know how I connected to the church. We've been coming there for 44 years, but when our kids were small, that's where we would always go on vacation because my husband worked for the airline. But then when we started coming over for six weeks, we were looking for a church and we went to, we went there and that only took one time. And we just enjoyed the service. We enjoyed the camaraderie and the warmth of all the people. And so when I started looking online, I looked there and found that they had services online. And uh, anyway, I walked by Kauai Hill Church. This is about, yeah, I guess 11 years ago. And I'm looking at this church and thinking, why do I feel that there's something I'm going to do here? I didn't know what. I was on YouTube and 
and I, you know, I, I, I have a daily walk with, with Christ. So I like to listen to different things. And lo and behold, there was Kauai Hell Church. And for some reason, I just thought, uh, I'm going to listen to this. And um, I just got a really good spiritual feeling with both, uh, with both Ken and Halima, both of them. And it just kind of went from there. I don't even know who these people are, but it touched them because technology allowed we can create and develop things that can reach an audience that we have never been able to reach in our lifetime before because it's impacting people in the same way it impacts people who are here physically. Panahe maila ko yesu kahea. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. The answer we need in this troubled modern world may be in our past history. 200 years ago, education was a key to survival in an ever-changing world and a way for people to stand firm when the world was infringing upon a population that was heading quickly toward extinction. A huge task at the time was to translate the Bible so Hawaiians could read and interpret the scriptures for themselves so that the Word of God may be presented to them in their own language. And so, over the course of 15 years, the first Hawaiian Bible in the Hawaiian language was faithfully translated, and by 1837, the Hawaiian Kingdom was the most literate nation on Earth. Literacy estimates were at 90%, even higher than Scotland's at the time. Missionary printing presses furiously stamped out spelling books hymnals, dictionaries, and newspapers. The Hawaiians' thirst for learning was unquenchable. Hearing the tender call of the Lord, some Hialeli accepted Christ into their hearts, beginning with Queen Keopuolani in 1823, Queen Regent Kaahumanu in 1824, and many more by the late 1820s. However, the Great Awakening, a massive movement of the Holy Spirit, didn't begin until 1837, and most of the smaller congregational churches were built between 1840 and 1860. These were called Apana churches. Well, in addition to, of course, Kawaiaha'o Church, um, we know that um, the church had up to 4,000 people attending at a time. And so uh, during the uh, early historical period as well, in the 1860s, Kawaiaha'o Church also planted uh, many churches across the Honolulu area. So we had what were known as Apana churches, and they were branch churches of Kawaiaha'o Church. And those churches um, were from Nu'uwanu and and all the way to Kaimuki, so Nu'uanu, Palama, A'ala, um, Makiki, Pau'oa, Manoa, Kaimuki, um, all had uh, Apana churches um, from Kawaiha'o Church. Um, yes, Kawaiha'o Church was very important in planting a church there uh, at Kalawao. And then uh, in the 1930s, the Siloama Church was considered unsafe and uh, the community had moved now to what is now known as Kalao Papa. So in the 1860s, actually in 1863, um, Kawaiha'o Church uh, commissioned eight missionaries from this church, all of Native Hawaiian descent, who now were sent down into the South Pacific and to the Western Pacific. So uh, Reverend James Kekela, uh, who was uh, ordained at Liliuo Kalani Church, but he was commissioned here from Kawaiha'o Church and he uh, went down to the Marquesas Islands and uh, served uh, in establishing church planting. Kahokuno Kuupu'uhono, a shelter in the time of storm. Christian churches have long been places of refuge since Jesus' apostles formed the first seven churches. Pre-contact Hawaiians understood this concept very well, having set aside certain lands as sanctuaries for the oppressed. During the reign of Kaui Keauli, Kamehameha III, Kauai Ha'o became a place where kings and commoners gathered in the shelter of their god and fellowship of other Christians. This tradition continues today. Kauai Ha'o Church, like many other um, entities, stands the test of time because we stand for communities, we stand for individuals, we stand for causes liken it to the Chinatown fire um, back in the early 1900s when there was nowhere else for them to go. They came here because they found solace, they found refuge, and they found um, a loving embrace 
from this community. We know the history of the Chinatown fire is actually related to an, a bubonic plague outbreak that occurred in uh, the historic part of downtown Honolulu. And in the effort to contain uh, this disease and the impact that it was having on the community, um, the city uh, decided to do what they thought would be a controlled burn of the affected areas. But in fact, um, what happened was the fire got terribly out of control and all of Chinatown burned down in much of historic Honolulu. So here at Kawaiahao Church, um, thousands of um, folks that had been displaced from Chinatown, um, including um, lots of uh, folks of Chinese descent, but other folks as well, um, actually lived here on the grounds of the church property. And we have um, history that tells us that women and children uh, lived here within the, the sanctuary of the church while the men uh, had tents and accommodations outside on the grounds of the church. So uh, for many, many months as uh, these folks were displaced, the church welcomed uh, the now newly homeless as they were trying to figure out what the next steps in their life was going to be. I'm Keiko Dembo and I'm currently the trustee of the board for the church. As in, the, as in the book of Deuteronomy it tells us that the elderly will explain to you. And that explaining has to do with the generations of our past that have come to the Hawaiian soils to bring the good news to the people of Hawaii. The song, Jesus Loves Me. And that is so impactful because that tells us that Jesus loved us and we have that mission to share that love of Jesus to others. So in terms of spreading God's word and doing his good works, Kauai Hau Church has extended itself to the community. There is a project out there called Hie Hie. And this is where the mobile showers go around the community on this island. And at the same time as they take the showers, they're given the, the food that um, or the meals that they might not have had the opportunity to receive. And you would see the people come out of the shower and be transformed. almost transformed, right, mm -hmm. Minta? Transformed. Transformed, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. First couple times we did it, we did not recognize who these people were after they came out of the shower. Hair combed, washed, clean clothes. Mm -hmm. And so it, it encouraged us to have clothing, clean clothing for them to mm -hmm. and shoes or slippers. And we, uh, we're a Hawaiian church, so we always provide food. So a good part of our mission that goes on every day um, of our church campus is the existence of our school. And so we provide that kind of opportunities for the KQ to be nurtured in a Christian-based school so that we share the word with them, and we certainly share what it means to be the children of Christ. While under house arrest, Queen Nili'uokalani epitomized what it means to be a faithful Christian and penned the Queen's Prayer. Mai nana ino ino, nahava o kanaka, aka e hui kala, a ma'e ma'e no. Do not regard the treachery of men, but forgive and cleanse. She prayed to Keokua and asked forgiveness for those who wronged her. Her examples of forgiveness and mercy is truly what aloha is about. Meleau Kolono Lani, I will sing the wondrous story. Many future leaders of Hawaii were spiritually strengthened throughout the years at Kuaiahao Church. Having a spiritual base or foundation is important in establishing and continuing the legacies of a church. These legacies are seen within the ministries of a church and how they work with the congregation as well as the community. In helping our community, we also find that Kuaiahao Church has opened its doors to our community. We have at-risk kids. We have kids that are in housing areas um, who go all over the place trying to find some place to happen. Well, we open our doors to these kids. That's how the, the partnership between this church and Warren Lila folks from Life360 began is because they care for many of the housing kids, up to about 500 of them. Those are the things that help to form the youth 
to form the individual to want to serve the rest of their life into our community. But it has to start at that age. They're, they are the ones that we have to be mindful of because they're the next generation. Hi, my name is Eun Strasser. I'm a co-vocational um, church planter here in Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, I'm a physician by day, uh, um, a senior pastor by life, I suppose. My name is Kelsey. I'm a hospice care nurse by trade. I think a lot of um, that round table of uh, partnering pastors, including Kahu Kenneth um, and, and our community, we started thinking about what, how can we partner together during COVID. So um, a little background about uh, what our community looks like. Um, it's called Makia Lo'o. Uh, Makia Lo'o in Hawaiian just means in the presence of or being put in front of or in the face of. So we believe in uh, the presence of God. We believe in being present with one another and present in the community around us. Hey, what do you think about delivering groceries to uh, 500 kapuna instead of the 75? And I think it was just it was so beautiful to me that her first answer was yes. From the advent of uh, COVID, we had sent out an all call to multiple organizations around around Kakako just being like, hey, if you want to know how to help your own neighbors, the most vulnerable during this time, then um, this is, these are the ways you can help. And um, whether it's churches or small businesses, corporations, it didn't matter. And we can easily say that actually Kabaya Hall was one of the church was one of the first uh, immediate responses. In particular to Kauai Ha'o, the music ministry is one such legacy. With the translations of English to O Lalo Hawai'i, He Many Hai Pule, or hymns, were able to be passed from parent to child. For over two centuries, several famous Kauai Ha'o musicians and singers found renown. Victoria Kamamalu Ka'ahumanu IV played the melodeon and led the choir. Queen Lili'o Kalani, composer of the Queen's Prayer and Aloha Oi, played the organ and led the choir. Princess Bernice Pawahi Bishop, the founder of Kamehameha Schools, sang in the Kauai Ha'o Choir. She began a statewide song contest, which originated from the church's Ahahimeni. On each island, every church choir would prepare a hymn to perform. The competition would be fierce, but the fellowship and pa'ina luncheon with all the vocalists and musicians together was delightful. Today, Sacred music still stirs faith in the hearts of the people attending services at Kauai Ha'o Church. Principal Director of Music, Nola E. Nahulu, oversees programs for the choir, a bell choir under the direction of Phyllis Haynes, and Hula Halau O Kauai Ha'o, directed by Kumuhula Artist Gomes. The church also supports the Hawaii Youth Opera Chorus, managed by Kauai Ha'o member Malia Ka'ai Barrett. Well, I think the value of music at Kauai Ha'o Church has been a long-held tradition at this church literally since its founding um, and continues to be a, a value of this church that will continue. So we have lots of history. Of course, we know that the choir was officially established in 1823 with Hiram Bingham uh, taught uh, members of the church to sing the um, Praise God from whom all blessings psalm. And that was kind of the formation of the choir. But we know that um, Princess Victoria Kamamalu, Princess uh, Bernice Powahi Bishop, uh, Princess um, Lili Okalani and then Queen Lili Okalani were members, very active members of the Kauai Ha'o Church Ministry of Music that Kahu really wanted to do with this youth service that we started called Life Under Construction is that we were focusing on building God's kingdom. And Part of that was also building God's future leaders. Um, these kids are the upcoming, you know, politicians, musicians, you know, performers, entertainers of Hawaii, and they wanted to kind of add us to this group of, of these young kids that are, you know, the next generation, um, and kind of keep them together, you know, help each other out, you know, with acting or dancing or singing, and just kupuna as in as in they are the teachers and the leaders that we've known you know, all, all, our, all our lives. There, there's always been a strong presence every time you enter. Um, a, a church that has been around for so long has been a, a beacon of, of, you know, kind of like of hope. It's Proverbs 16, verse nine. In their hearts, humans plan their course, 
but the Lord establishes their steps. And if it hasn't become apparent to everyone right now is, Kiakua is in control. Uh, no matter what our plans may be, he is directing our paths. And the nice part about being a part of this bicentennial this year is I feel it's brought our church together. It's brought our community together. It's taken us beyond what we think our own selves are and what we can do to, to help others. Uh, that we were able to pivot it to the various communities and to the outreach programs, to the various ministries. That in itself was, was uh, it, it brought me great joy that we were able to help others. And that's exactly what this whole Bicentennial has been about for 201 years now. It's really about making disciples and sharing God's message. Uh, during this Bicentennial was the support of the various corporate sponsorships that we have. Now, none of them need to, but these are, these are companies who, some of them have descended from the missionary families that allowed us to do all those outreach programs. I mean, a big mahalo to every single one of those, those sponsors and businesses that, that understand the value of, of giving back to Keakua, giving back to the community, and we just all take that in as just one family and, and it is a, as our kuleana. And for that, thank you to everyone. For 200 years, Kwayaha'o Congregation has been faithfully working towards exemplifying the spirit of aloha that Henry Opukaha'ia had for God and for Hawai'i's people. The same spirit that inspired the missionaries to answer God's calling to spread his message of aloha to the people of Hawai'i. As the church closes out its bicentennial year, no one ever expected that COVID-19 would have made such a drastic impact on every church in the islands, as well as the world. However, because of COVID-19, a 200-year-old church demonstrated that the Word of God and the love of God is not limited to just the physical structure we call church. Through broadcasting services across YouTube, Facebook, and Hawaii's internet radio, Kauai Ha'o Church has reached across the continental U.S. and to multiple international countries, such as Japan, Germany, Canada, and more. The Word of God stays the same through all generations. As Kauai Ha'o reflects on the past 200 years and looks ahead, our hope is that the future generations continue to exhibit the spirit of aloha and fulfill our missions of honoring God, loving one another, and making disciples.